Hello and welcome to another Clip Studio Paint tutorial. In this occasion, I will talk about auto actions. I will go through the basics and also more technical tips and examples. In auto actions, we can record multiple operations and then play them all automatically. Let's start with the basics. First, we go to Window, Auto Action to show the auto action palette. Click in this button to create a new action and name it. For this example, I will create a glow action. Press the red button to start recording. Now let's add commands to the action. First, I will duplicate the firework base. And it recorded the duplicated layer as a new command. Now I will change the drawing color. Notice how if I keep changing the color, it will record the last one for the command. Go to edit, convert to drawing color and change the blending mode to add glow. Then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. A quick disclaimer. We can stack multiple filters, but they can affect the performance of the action. So keep that in mind, especially if you plan to share the actions. I set the strength to 50 and then I press stop. Now I can repeat all these commands by double clicking the action name or pressing the play button. Once created, we can edit the actions commands. Select the command you want to modify, then for example to duplicate, right click it and choose duplicate command. Click and drag to change the order. We can also hold Alt while dragging to duplicate. Press the trash button to delete a command. We can also enable or disable specific commands. So I disabled the add glow blending mode and added another duplicate at the end. Now the action reflects the changes. Press play with a selected command to ignore all the steps above it. Press record to modify or keep adding commands from there. Here I changed the color of the glow and added a delete layer command as an example. We can activate the settings for commands with dial boxes such as the Gaussian blur. Now we can change the settings of the filter. Press OK to continue with the action. Notice how it retains the original value in the action. If the settings are disabled, it will apply the original. We can record almost anything as a command, such as creating new layers or changing the editing layer. But there are some things we can record, such as selecting tools, drawing on the canvas, Changing the interface from the window menu and changing the canvas from the view menu such as flipping the canvas or zoom levels. Also at the moment we can play another action. Layers movements will be recorded. Same as transformations, even the mesh tool. It will save changes to the canvas size and operations in the file menu such as import, export or open. The action will record the exact path of the file, so keep that in mind. We can save new file settings as a command. It will save all the settings, even the name, so we can use it to create templates for our files. Some commands need to meet certain conditions to work, or they can break the action. Here I have a simple action with a deselect command. If there's a selection in the canvas and I play the action, it will remove the selection. If there's no selection in the canvas, the action will stop because we didn't meet the conditions. We can add the conditions to the action name so we don't forget. When working with actions and layers, we need to consider two different types of commands. I divide them in relative and specific. I will create a drop shadow action to better explain the difference between the two. 
First, I duplicate the original layer. Then I set the drawing color to black. I select the original layer and go to Edit, Convert to Drawing Color. Move the layer to add the shadow and then I will go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Play with the settings to achieve the shadow, then lower the opacity. And that's the action, so I stop the recording. I played the action to create the drop shadow. And it seems to work, but look what happened when I tried to apply it to another shape. As you can see, it started the action in the shape by duplicating, but then it applied the rest of the action to the layer name circle. This happened because I created a specific command when I needed a relative one. So if we take a closer look to the action, we can see that when I selected the original layer, it created a change editing layer command. This is a specific command that will look for a layer name circle and it will select that layer. So the action will only work when the original layer is named circle. What we need is a relative command, such as duplicate layer, that will work without conditions. I will edit the action to make it relative. First, I will delete the change editing layer command. Then with the layer structure I need, I select the change drawing color and press record to add a new command after it. Now, instead of selecting the base layer in the layer palette, I will go to the layer menu, change selected layer, layer below. Now I can stop the recording. This creates a relative command, so we will select the layer below the one we have selected. Now that we made the action relative, I can apply it to the square, and it will work as intended. We can use specific commands when creating actions for organization. As an example, I will record a layer set action. First, I go to layer, new layer folder. Name it and choose a color. I will add layers with the specific parameters, going to layer, new layer, raster layer. This opens up a dialog where we can input the name for the layer, change the expression color and the blending mode. I set this first layer to base and change its color. Now I will add a shadow layer. If we hold alt and click the new layer icon, it will bring up the details panel. Name it and set it to multiply. Then I clip it to the base layer and change its color. Keep adding the layers you need for your work. For this example, I added a highlight layer and one for details. We can also create vector layers using the same method. We can go to layer, new layer, tone to create a tone layer and specify the exact parameters we need. I also fill the layer mask with transparent color. I hope you get the idea of how useful this can be for speeding up your work. Just add the type of layers you need. Now I can play the action to create a folder with this layer structure. Using the same method, I created a tone layer action. This creates a folder with different tone layers in it. The tone layer masks are filled with transparent. I did this by going to Edit, Advanced Fill, so I don't need to change the main color. Now I just paint in the mask to apply the tone. If we use actions with specific commands, we need to learn how the layer order affects the priority of the action. Here I have a simple action that loads the selection of the layer name base. Now I have another layer name base on top and outside of the group. Let's play the action and see what happens. It selected the one in the bottom. If I move the layer to the bottom of the stack, it's still outside of the group. It will select from the bottom layer, ignoring the group. Here I have another simple action that changed the editing layer to a layer named Shadows. Now I have two layers named Shadows inside the folder and another one outside in another group. Play the action and it selects the top layer inside the group. So change editing layer selects the top layer in the stack, but it will take in consideration layer folders. In short, keep in mind the priority when using specific commands that depend on the order of the layers.
we can use batch processing to speed up our workflow even more. I have multiple pages with the sketches that I want to remove the white background. So first, let's record the action. I duplicate the layer to make the action not destructive. Then I go to Edit, Tonal Correction, Level Correction. I add contrast using the sliders. Then go to Edit, Convert Brightness to Opacity. Finally, hold Alt and click the eye icon to make it the only one visible. Then stop the recording. Go to File, Patch Process. Choose to run Auto Action and select the one you need. We can specify where to apply the process. Apply to all pages. And in the Save Options, choose Save and Close, but don't close the canvas already open. After it runs in the first canvas, it will give us the option to continue or to skip. Choose Continue and do not show this dialog again to apply the process to all the pages. It applies the action and remove the background from all the pages. Really useful for scanning comics. Here I have a simple action to change the color of the lines, activate the layer color effect and set it to red. Now I select some of the pages and apply the batch process to selected pages. This way we can modify specific pages. We can paste an element in multiple canvas. Copy what you want to paste with Ctrl C, then start recording the action and press Ctrl V. Stop recording. Paste is the only command we need for this action. We will paste the element in the same place, so it's perfect for same sized documents or pages. Use it with batch processing in all pages, and it will place the element in the clipboard in all of them. Combining this simple action with batch processing, we can place a logo, a watermark, or any element we want in multiple documents. Here I have multiple documents open, and I will create a simple finishing action to apply on them. Go to Layer, New Correction Layer, Tone Curve. I add contrast using an S curve. Then go to Layer, New Correction Layer, Gradient Map. Choose a gradient map. Then set the layer to Screen Blending Mode and lower the opacity. Stop the recording. This is a simple finishing action. We can add any correction layer we want. Before applying batch processing, I turn on the dialog setting for the tone curve correction layer. Then go to File, Batch Processing, choose the finishing action and apply to open canvas. First we change the tone curve and then it will play the rest of the action. Since we set the dialog setting for the tone curve, in the next canvas it will give us the option to continue, open the dialog setting or skip. We choose to show the settings. For this example, I make a drastic change, so it's easy to notice. Then I choose continue and do not show the dialog again. This applies the action to the rest of the canvas and it will use the last settings we choose for the tone curve. So keep that in mind when using dialog settings in batch processing. Here are some tips to integrate actions smoothly in our workflow. First, let's assign keyboard shortcuts to an action. We go to file. Shortcut settings. In the settings area drop down menu, choose auto action. Then find the action you want to assign a shortcut. In this case, check fill layer. With the action selected, go to edit shortcut and assign a keyboard shortcut to the action. In this case, I assign the F6 key. Now I can play the action using the shortcut. There's no need to have the auto action palette open either. This action contains the colors between black and other gray, so we can check on fill areas. Then we can fix it using the fill tools. Toggle the layer color effect by pressing Ctrl V. Right click any action and select button mode. This turns the action list into clickable buttons. Now I can press the one I want and apply it. Turn it off from the palette drop down menu. We can add actions to the common bar. Just drag and drop it, then click the icon to play the action. Right click and go to icon settings to customize it. We can also add actions to the quick access palette. Go to window, quick access, drag the actions you want into the panel, then press the button to apply them. We can use the settings drop down menu to manage actions and sets. We can create, delete, duplicate, and change their names. We can also move or copy actions between sets, register a set as material, import, and export them. Click in this icon to import an action set from materials. Select the one you want, and then we can apply the actions of the set. 
You can browse Clip Studio assets with the auto action filter to download the actions created by the community. There's a lot of amazing sets for free. I will link the text version of this tutorial in the description below, where I explain step by step how to create interesting auto actions. And you can also download the action set I create for this tutorial. So please go check it out. These are the examples of the auto actions I create for the set. I hope you can apply some of the information into your own work, experiment with actions to speed up your workflow and to create complex effects. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.